Hello everyone, again welcome to this course on design for 3D printing using Autodesk Fusion 360. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to prepare G codes for your STL file using slicer softwares like Ultimaker Cura. In our last lesson, we had already prepared this bracket 3D model using Autodesk Fusion 360 and we had also exported this CAD model as a STL file format and we had saved it onto our desktop onto our computer so that we are going to use that STL file and we are going to prepare the G code using that particular STL file and we are going to use the software called Ultimaker Cura to do this and why we are preparing this G code because 3D printer does not understand STL file format or any other file format it only understands the G code files where uh, we used to prepare the G code files using slicer software like Ultimate Cura that is an open source software and we can also use softwares like Simplify 3D that is a paid software so it's already on to us but in our lesson or in this course I'm going to use the open source software Ultimate Cura so let's move on to my desktop and I will show you how to set up this software and how to prepare a g-code file using your STL file so here you can see that this is my desktop screen and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to launch launch my Google Chrome browser as you can see this is my Google Chrome browser and will and we'll just open this Google Chrome browser and by default I will just I will just go into the Google and search for the software that is Ultimate Cura. Here you can see and the moment I will just press enter this is the first option I'm getting I will just click on that this Ultimate Cura software and that will open its default website its uh, original website and here you can see it says download for free since it's a open source software as you can see uh, it, it's completely free to use for commercial and for personal purposes so i will just click on this option over here to download for free and then i will select this since i'm using windows so i will select my windows 64 bit option over here and here you can see it's downloading so it, it is around 281 megabytes of file size so it will take few seconds to download onto my pc so here you can see it just got downloaded on you can see over here into my chrome browser so i will just double click on it to run this software and you can see that uh, it, it it start installing so you, you had to install this software like any other application program you install on your windows on mac so you had to follow the same process i will just press next I agree next next and here you can see it's installing so we'll wait for a few minutes uh, until it will get installed 100% so as you can see it is just finishing the installation so I will just untick this option over here and will click on the finish option over here now it just got installed into my PC into my Windows PC so the next thing I will do I will just go on to the windows over here and will search for the ultimate cura there you can see this is the software that is the version is 5.4.0 that is I had just installed into my PC I will just make a right click and click on run as administrator and it will launch the software And here is the default screen of our Ultimate Cura software that we had just installed. So I will just skip all these things over here and we'll click on close option over here. And here you can see by default it has some default printer set. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do in this software is we will, we will first set up our 3D printer. So whatever 3D printer you had, you had to first set up your 3d printer and then you can start converting your STL files to g-code files to set up a new 3d printer what i will do i will just go on to the preferences option over here as you can see and we'll click on the config cura option over here and a new window will pop up here you can see i will go on to the printers option over here and then i can just click on add new so maybe you can see some different 3d printer as you can as you can see i had already had a preset printer over here since we had some backup file already onto my pc but whenever you are first installing maybe you will be able to see some default printer option over here so what you can do just click on add new and then you can just click on none none ultimaker printers because uh, you're not if you have ultimaker printers you can select this option otherwise you can just click on none ultimaker printer and then i will click on this add a non network printer since my printer is not connected with the network so then i will search for my brand a printer brand so in my case my printer brand is tevo so i will just go below and search for the tevo option here you can see this is my uh, tevo 
brand and will expand that and from here I, I'm able to select all my printers so this is my exact printer exact printer model that I am using right now so I will just select that and I will click on add and the moment I had clicked on add it will just get added over here here you can see it is just getting added so since all I already had a uh, Tevo Tarantula added over here by Tevo Tarantula name so the new printer just got added with the name hashtag 2 like if you have any folder already there if you try to create any folder with the same name it uh, computer will automatically add uh, this prefix 2 in the last so the same happened now I will just go on to the machine settings and will make sure that the rest of the settings are correct so since it's it's being provided by the Tebo company this preset file so the, all the settings are correct like my printer bed size and its rectangular build plate and the other settings like uh, uh, you just had to go on to the extruder one option and to make sure that the, your nozzle size is correct and also the filament diameter that you are going to use is correct so these two this few of the things are important also you had to make sure that you had a heated if you have a heated bed uh, you can tick this option otherwise you can untick this option so you also had to have knowledge of uh, of the 3d printer if you have a 3d printer you can check out its specifications and accordingly you can fill up the details over here then uh, since my printer is merlin based merlin uh, i'm using the merlin firmware so g code flavor is merlin definitely and i had number of extruder has just one so these are the basic settings that you had to take care of and once you are happy with these things you can just close it and you can close it this option over here also now you are ready to import your stl file into cura and start slicing your uh, file so here you can see i am just into cura default screen so the next thing that we're going to do is we'll bring our STL file into the Cura software. So for that, I will just click on this folder icon over here. I will just click on over here and will uh, locate my folder where I had saved my STL file. So my STL file is in the my course folder. So I will just go into the course folder and here you can see this is my STL file. If I will just select the STL file, I will be able to see the preview into my preview pane if you are using Windows. But still, if you're not able to see the preview, just click on open this and it will just come on to your uh, Cura software. Here you As you can see, we had just imported this STL file into the Cura software. So the next thing that we are going to do is we'll make sure that the right 3D printer is selected that we had just added when we are setting up the Cura. So here you can see this is the Tevo Tarantula hashtag 2 3D printer that we had added and after that we had to make sure that the material that we are going to use is right. So in my case we are going to use the PLA material. Also if you want to check out some other material you can check that. But I am using PLA so selected generic PLA so it's fine and here in the settings if you will go on to the print settings option over here here you have to make sure that you are using the draft profile so uh, the layer height will be 0.2 millimeter this means that whenever 3d printer is printing the file on every layer it is printing 0.2 millimeter of materials only in jet direction and after that we have to check some more settings like how, how much infill you want to take for in this case here you can see right now it is 20 percent and also the support is turned off because uh, we, we had designed this part for 3d printing so we don't need any support uh, we don't need any support to print this part and uh, apart from that we can also check some of the settings like if we go into the quality option over here my layer height is 0.2 uh, that is 100% correct we can also change that like we can make it 0.1 or 0 0.3 0 0.4 so it's completely like how much accurate part we need it's it will change this layer height it will affect our surface accuracy uh, roughness surface roughness so the 0.2 is uh, I will recommend all the time uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height is enough for all kind of 3d prints and if you go on to the wall section over here so wall thickness i'm considering 0.8 so you can change that so if you are using 0.4 mm of nozzle and you are taking a wall thickness of 0.8 this means that there will be two layers of wall wall counts will be two so uh, 0.4 into 2 is, will be 0.8 so you can change that if you want to change the wall count to 3 you can change that and accordingly the things will update then uh, the top and bottom layers the same thing like if i am using at point 2 millimeter layer height then you can see the top if I am taking the four layers this mean bit this means that it will be total of 0.8 millimeter of thickness so my layer height is 0.2 and we are taking four number of layers so 0.8 millimeter of thickness so this is this walls and top and bottom layers are all about the outer thickness of your part so if you will just change the top layer to six I think that will be great now 
the next option is the infill option so infill is like the how much dense you want to keep your part from inside so here you can see my infill density is 20 percent so uh, inside material will be 20 percent once it will finish the walls and the top and bottom so the rest area will be just 20 percent dense and then the material definitely uh, uh, the printing temperature will be 200 degrees centigrade so these temperatures you can ask from your manufacturer material manufacturer so in my case i'm using pla so for pla 200 degrees centigrade is more than enough and for the build plate temperature if you had a, if you have a heat bed in your 3d printer you can take it otherwise you can make it zero if you don't have a uh, heat bed into your 3d printer otherwise it will give error into your 3d printer if you will uh, make select this option as 60 degree on this build temperature and if your 3d printer doesn't have heat bed it will start giving error so the best way if you don't have a heat bed just make this temperature at 0 degree centigrade also the speed speed is like uh, the 60 mm per second for 3d printer is a standard speed printing speed so i'm going to take not going to change that and after that uh, we got an options to travel so the travel is like i will enable retraction so the retraction is the settings that will stop stringing for example if your printer nozzle is moving from this point to this point so whenever the nozzle moves from this point to this point so there will be some stringing of materials will be there so just to avoid that i had enabled retraction so that will help me in the surface quality of your 3d print and also then this cooling option will be there so cooling option is like uh, whenever you will buy a 3d printer or build a 3d printer you will install a part cooling fan near to your nozzle just to cool down the materials that is coming out from your nozzle so uh, that option if you have that option if you had installed that fan then you can just turn this option otherwise if you have not installed the fan you can turn it off as well you can just untick this option and this 100 percent says that my i am going to run my fan that i had installed near to my nozzle at 100 percent speed so that you can control uh, so if you will change it to that this to 50 percent so this means that you want your fan to blow uh, air onto your paths at 50 percent capacity so those options you can control that and then the supports so i told you since we had designed this part definitely 100 percent for 3d printing so we don't need any supports if, if if you had not designed your part for 3d printing and you try to make a g-code from that stl file then you had to turn on this option but since this part is designed for 3d printing so uh, i am not going to turn on this option i don't need any supports then the build, build plate adhesion so build plate adhesion i'm going to take brim uh, brim option over here so brim option is like first 3d printer will add some extra layer of materials around my object just to uh, make sure that my part is 100 uh, percent sticking with the bed of my 3d printer and then the dual extrusion option over here since we, I, my printer has just single nozzle so there is no mint of having this op to check this option over here so, so as you can see uh, i had checked all the settings into this Cura software for the draft quality of 3d print so now i will just click on this slice option over here so my stl file will get converted as a g-code file format so i will just click on the slice option over here and it here you can see it just took few seconds and now it is giving me a preview like if i'm going to print this part it is going to take 18 gram of material and the and the time that it is going to take is 1 hour 32 minutes so it will take 1 hour 32 minutes to print my file with a speed of 60 mm per second using PLA material so I will just click on this preview option over here just to see like how the parts will look like so here you can see this is the preview of my part so this is how 3d printer is going to print so these are the brim that I told you just to make extra layers to so my uh, part will stick well to the bed of my 3d printer and here you can see uh, you, you can easily see the layer lines are all visible onto my part so i am uh, if i will just play this option over here here you can see nozzle will print like this somehow like this onto my 3d printer exact 3d printers so preview is just a simulation of your 3d printer so my files is 100 percent ready now what i'm going to do now is i will just click on this save to disk and then i will go on to my folder course folder and i'm going to save my g-code file here you can see at the bottom it is saving the here you can see it is saving as a g-code file format so here you can rename it i will just give it a name of bracket i don't want any random name so i will able to identify my part so here you can see i had just given it a name called bracket and the file format that is uh, saving over here is as a dot g-code file format so this is the only file format that 3d printer understand 
so i will just click on the save option over here so here you can see it just got saved and now if i will just go on to that folder where i had saved my file and if i will show you that folder here you can see this is the file that we had saved and it's like a text file now if i will just double click and try to open this file so here you can see there are lots of g codes over here like in the x y and g coordinates so these x y and g coordinates and all these g codes will instruct your 3d printer to all the three axes to move simultaneously and also extrude materials also melt materials to prepare your part to build your part slowly slowly so next thing that we're going to take this g code file and we'll use that into our 3d printer and we'll see how our part is going to come into the real world so see you in the next lesson guys thank you